Alright, I hope you're excited to learn about one of my personal favourite philosophers of the 20th century, Michael Oakeshott. He is probably seconded only to Miss Ayn Rand, and he certainly provides the metaphysical aspects of a strong conservative ideology mixed with the more materialistic views espoused by Ayn Rand and her idea of uh, semi-Austrian capitalism with a minarchist state, but obviously Ayn Rand talks a lot about morality as well. So, that's just a brief introduction to why I personally have an affinity for Mr. Michael Oakeshott, but I'll have an, uh, we will elaborate on his core philosophy now. So, Michael Oakeshott lived between 1901 and 1990, and obviously we've got a picture of Michael Oakeshott to the right there, smoking a pipe very conservatively, an upright gent. So, Oakeshott and his contributions to conservatism. Michael Oakeshott was one of the most important conservative philosophers of the modern day. He famously developed the notion that although conservatism inherently has a pessimistic view of human nature, it does not need to be a philosophy of pessimism. Oakeshott shared the Madisonian view that men were fallible but not terrible. Obviously, that's a quote from Oakeshott, and the Madisonian uh, counterpart would be that if a man were a pure angel, no state would be required, and if he were a pure demon, no state could contain him. So, he therefore made conservatism moderately more optimistic. Oakeshott elaborated on the traditional conservative principles that there is unknown wisdom to tradition as there have hitherto been as they have hitherto worked and they have stayed around for their wisdom. So essentially, uh, if you're thinking about tradition and conventions in British politics, they have stayed around because they've essentially worked. Uh, so if you think about our organic constitution, it works, we haven't had to have a massive overhaul of it. I know there was some of that going on in uh, Tony Blair's administration. But by and large, our system of parliamentary statutes and common law, uh, essentially developing our own uncodified constitution, has hitherto worked, and the UK has been one of the most stable countries in the world. We were able to maintain a monarchy through a time where they were essentially being destroyed. Think about Tsar Nicholas II in Russia, uh, Kaiser Wilhelm II in Germany, the Ottoman Empire. All around the world, monarchies were dwindling out of existence, but the British monarchy stayed strong, and... Uh, we haven't really had a violent revolution like you saw in France between 1789 to 1799. Uh, the closest thing would be our English Civil War. And obviously that was really uh, put into the shadow by the glorious revolution of 1688, which showed the inherent peaceful uh, demonstrations of the English as a nation. Uh, also, you can see this in American politics. The American Revolution was far, far, far more peaceful than the French Revolution, and it's because their philosophy was based on English empiricism, and uh, while it was not very conservative, a good deal of classical liberalism was included in it, and obviously, as we previously said with the uh, figures like John Dickinson, there were certainly American conservatives. So, Oakeshott elaborated on the traditional conservative principles that there is unknown wisdom to, to, to tradition as it has hitherto worked and they have stayed around for a reason. This is best summarised by the Bertrand Russell quote that not all change is progress and I think that is very profound. You should probably uh, memorise that and include it in your essays because when you're talking about stuff like socialism and arguing uh, conservative thought against it, although I do not believe Bertrand Russell was particularly conservative, it's uh, a very good quote to have in mind, because is all change really progress? 
does it lead to moral degeneracy and the ultimate uh, destruction of the state from within where it will be soon replaced by a more oppressive and authoritarian one from a foreign nation? That is the question. Essentially, we do not know the consequences of uprooting these traditions, so it is wise to keep them, as their removal may undermine the social order. And essentially, we do not know the consequences of their removal. They've worked so far, but the progressive who wants to get rid of all these old traditions, like uh, the institution of marriage, or essentially women's only spaces in the, ca in the case of transgenderism, and uh, biological males wishing to use female uh, restrooms. The progressives want that, I personally disagree. Uh, but the thing is, what is the, consequ what is the consequences of removing uh, women's only spaces? Well... If you know anything about Loudoun County, you, you probably would take my side. But nonetheless, I don't want to get banned. So, let's go on with Oakshot. Conservatives and their lack of idealism. Oakshot argues that conservatism is a disposition in some individuals, as progressivism is a disposition in others. So essentially, some people are... Uh, essentially naturally conservative, they look to the past and long for it, whereas a progressive would be naturally uh, progressive, looking to the future and longing for that. Both of them not really uh, taking into account the negative aspects of the past or the negative possibilities of the future where their desired change to come into effect. He claims that there are some who automatically value the past over the present, even a past that they have never experienced, and they can feel this way from a young age, which is why he calls these kinds of people custodians of the museum, and I uh, personally love that term. So, they are inherently hesitant to change, and fear the uncertainty of the future, Hence why they prioritise the stability of the past. Oakshot argues that this conservative disposition of the custodians is rooted in their rejection of political ideals. Conservatives prefer present laughter as opposed to the possibility of future euphoria. Ergo, they essentially prefer the actual to the possible. So they aren't willing to risk the joys of the present for the possibility of a better future, because that future may not be better, and they're not willing to sacrifice what they currently have. So, conservatives and their love of tradition. Oakshot was dismissive of political doctrines that were based on a priori assertions about reality, and Oakshot preferred a more pragmatic and empirical approach to politics, which is generally termed the art of the possible. This approach gives conservatives the impetus to preserve tradition as it has come about through trial and error in an organic manner, very different to ideologies that rely on idealism, such as socialism and anarchism, which intend to apply a political ideal to reality that has not yet been tested, but merely presumed to work. Uh, I know I've focused on socialism and anarchism there, uh, predominantly left-wing ideologies. There are ANCAPs, anarcho-capitalists, but they tend to not have as much of an influence as the anarcho-communists and the syndicalists. But I suppose, uh, although I do admire Ayn, Man, Ayn Rand a great deal, her political philosophy is very idealistic in places, and we do not know whether it will actually work in reality. As Like uh, a lot of these other ideologies, it relies on a priori reasoning, uh, the reason for that being that it is dependent on Austrian economics. Uh, so, the Austrian economics essentially is common sense applied to economics. We'll get into it in a, at another time. But it's very important to understanding conservatism, especially in the 20th century. 
show, Oakshot and the Nautical Metaphor. Oakshot believed that the state existed to prevent bad behaviour as opposed to creating good behaviour. Therefore, the Oakshotian view essentially supported a night watchman state that merely prevented criminal behaviour with no attempt to guide citizens morally. So, a state that preserves negative liberties as opposed to positive ones. That's a uh, staunch difference between libertarianism and classical liberalism compared to modern liberalism, like we talked about last time with John Rawls and his advocacy of positive liberties as opposed to the traditional uh, classical liberal and libertarian view of negative liberty. Oakshot advised Stoicism to get people through hard times in a nautical metaphor which saw people travelling from port to port, making their way with no particular destination in mind, the destination essentially being a political ideal, and travelling from port to port meaning that they are just getting by, there's no ultimate place where we're heading to, and if they're if that place doesn't exist, well, it's good to just be getting by and by. You don't really want to be like, oh, we're going to throw off all of our water because we want to get to our destination uh, twice as fast, believing that the uh, destination is only 10 miles ahead when, in fact, it doesn't exist, and now you're in the middle of the ocean with no water and you're going to dehydrate to death. So, that's probably the best way I can summarise the nautical metaphor. Oakshot's philosophy is very popular among traditional conservative circles. However, some new right philosophers believe that it was too fatalistic, and his philosophy allowed socialism to take root and challenged in Western democracies throughout the 20th century. So, uh, thinking about the resistance to socialism from people like Joe McCarthy, Robert Heinlein, Ayn Rand, you don't really see that same kind of resistance coming from Oakshot. He's more focused on the domestic matters and essentially conserving the past. So, that's essentially uh, the philosophy of Michael Oakshot summarised. In the sense that he was too fatalistic, that would probably be referring to the fact that he believed some people were born uh, with the conservative and progressive dispositions. Someone who believes in the idea of tabula rasa, so a Lockean classical liberal would probably disagree and believe that they are merely a product of their cultural environment. Uh... And it doesn't take into account the fact that people may act or think differently. But anyway, I digress. That is the philosophy of Michael Oakeshott, one of the greatest conservative philosophers of all time, in my opinion. Thank you.